Good morning, Miss Barber here. This lesson is titled Measures of Central Tendency. Measures of Central Tendency is a broad term that is intended to represent that which may be typical in a variety of situations. For example, the average age of incoming freshmen is 18. The average hourly wage of a fast food worker is right at minimum wage. And according to the Statista website, the average number of children in an American family in 2019 was 1.93. Think about that for a minute. The number of children, 1.93. Do you have siblings? If so, which one of you was the 0.93 child? Let's begin with some definitions. An average is a number that is representative of a group of data. The arithmetic mean, or simply mean, has the symbol X bar when it is a sample of a population and has the symbol of the Greek letter mu for the entire population. Three, the mean X bar is the sum of the data divided by the number of pieces of data. The formula for calculating the mean is represented as X bar equals sigma X divided by N. Sigma X represents the sum of all data. It is often read summation and N represents the number of pieces of data. The median is the value in the middle of a set of ranked data. If the middle is two values, then the mean of the middle two values is the median. Ranked data means data is placed in order. The mode is the piece of data that occurs most frequently. The mid-range is the value halfway between the lowest, represented by L, and highest, represented by H, values in a set of data. If you want the formula, it would be mid-range is equal to the sum of the lowest value and the highest value divided by 2. Example, find the four measures for central tendency for the following set of numbers, 84, 100, 92, 76, 76, 70, 82, 67, 82, 95, 46, 76, 78, 84, 100. Part A, find the mean. The mean is given by the formula, the summation of X divided by N. By that, we want to add up all of the numbers I just read and divide that by the total number of items. Count them and you'll find out there were 15 pieces of data. Adding up the terms in the numerator, the sum is 1,208. We divide that by 15, which gives us X is approximately 80.533. Part B, find the median. To find the median, we must order this data first. You could do it manually or put it in an Excel spreadsheet and hit sort. Putting it in order, we get 46, 67, 70, 76, 76, 76, 78, 82, 82, 84, 84, 92, 95, 100, 100. We have 15 pieces of data. The value that corresponds to the middle rank which is the eighth position, is the number 82. That is the median. Part C, find the mode. Mode is the data value that occurs the most, and the data value that occurs the most is 76. Find the mid-range. Remember, the mid-range is the sum of the lowest value plus the highest value divided by 2. From the previous part, we already ranked the data, so we know that the lowest value is 46. We're going to add that to the highest value of 100 and divide it by 2. 
The sum of 146 is 146. Divide that by 2, we get the min range 73. Example, suppose that there were 10 graduates from the accounting department last year and all of them are now employed. The mean yearly salary for those students is $84,000. Does this convince you that an accounting major will guarantee you a high salary? Why? Not likely. Starting salaries can vary greatly depending on the firm and location. Suppose that eight of the graduates got entry positions having no experience. Their starting salaries were $72,000. However, two of the graduates had internships prior to their graduation and were offered positions at their large firms with $132,000 salaries. The mean of these 10 salaries is $84,000, and yet most of the graduates' starting salaries were $12,000 less than the mean. Example, determine which is likely to be larger and discuss why. Bullet point one. The mean salary or the median salary in a large corporation, bullet point two. The mean grade or the median grade in a large section freshman class. Let's begin with the mean salary. The mean salary is likely to be higher than the median salary in a large corporation because a few high paying upper management positions tend to pull up the average. Now mean grade or median grade in a large freshman class. The median grade is likely to be higher than the mean grade in a large section freshman class as one or two very low grades tend to pull down the class average and there is an upper bound on the highest grade possible. The mean of a frequency distribution. When many data occur more than once and a frequency distribution is used to organize the data, we use the following formula to calculate the mean. The mean is still equal to x bar and that is equal to the sum of the product of x times f, all of that divided by n, where x represents each data value, f represents the frequency of the data value, that is how many times does it occur, Summation XF represents the sum of all products obtained by multiplying each data value by its frequency, and N represents the total frequency of the distribution. Example, the weight to the nearest five pounds of 34 randomly selected male college students are organized in the given histogram. Use this histogram to find the mean weight. We'll begin this problem by recording the weights that are indicated along the horizontal axis of the histogram. We'll begin with 105, then 110, 115, 120, 125, 130, 135, 140, 145, and 150. Now we're going to determine the frequency. The frequency is determined by the height of the bar at the weight. So at 105, the height of the bar is 1. At 110, we see that the height of the bar is 3. Just as for 115, the height of the bar is 3. At 120, we see that the height of the bar is 5. At 125, the height of the bar is 6. And at 130, the height of the bar is 7. Now the bars get shorter. At 135, the height of the bar is 4. At 140, the height of the bar is 2. At 145, the height of the bar is 1. And at 150, the height of the bar is 2. Now the x dot f column. That means we take the data item, which is the weight, and multiply it to the frequency number. So 105 times 1, that's 105. 110 times 3, that's 330. 115 times 3, that will be 345. 120 times 5, that's 600. 
125 times 6, that'll be 750. 130 pounds times 7 is 910. 135 times 4 is 540. 140 times 2 is 280. And then there's only one person that weighed 145 pounds and two at 150, so that would be 300. Now to find the mean, the mean is equal to x bar, which is equal to the sum of the products of x times f divided by n. The sum of x times f is 4,305, and the number of frequencies better be 34, and when you add them up, it is. Now let's put those numbers into the formula and you get 4305 divided by 34. And we'll say that that's approximately close enough to 126.618. The mean weight obtained from this frequency distribution is 126.618 pounds. Part B. Use it, meaning the frequency distribution, to find the median weight. We'll use the frequency distribution to locate the middle item. Since we have 34 data points, the median is the mean average of the values of the middle two positions or the mean of the 17th and 18th positions. What would that look like? Well, let's begin. 105 is the first position. And 110, that's second, third, and fourth positions. Remember, these are ranked. Then for 115, that would be fifth, sixth, and seventh positions. 120, there's five of them. So we're going to have eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth positions. At 125, we've got six more rankings starting at 13th. So we'll have 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. The 17th and 18th positions give us our median when we take the mean of those two. The weight of the 17th male is 125 pounds, as well as the weight of the 18th male. So the mean of 125 and 125 is the median, which is 125 pounds. Let's notice that the mean and median differ by less than two pounds. 